Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to use a switch statement to handle multiple actions. You can tell the Redux store how to handle multiple action types. Say you are managing a user authentication in your Redux store. You want to have a state representation for when users are logged in and when they are logged out. You represent this with a single state object with the property authenticated. You also need action creators that create actions corresponding to user login and user logout along with the action objects themselves. The code editor has a store, actions, and action creator set up for you. The store has, has a store. So here's the store. Actions. This is a reducer. This is the state. This looks like the action. This is the action. Login and log out. And action creators. Default state. Action creator, perhaps. Use a JavaScript switch statement in the reducer to respond to different action events. In the reducer, we're going to use a switch statement um, uh, to respond to different action events. This is a standard pattern in writing Redux reducers. The switch statement should switch over action.type to return the appropriate action. JavaScript switch statement. I don't remember how to do this one exactly. So I'm just going to copy this switch statement into here. Um, okay, cool. And then use the switch statement and the reducer. This is the standard pattern in writing. So this is going to be pretty common in Redux. Redux. I don't use Redux a lot, so this is new to me as well. Standard pattern. Then switch statement should switch over action.type. So here we've got action being passed into the reducer. So we want to go action.type, put that in here, and return the appropriate authenticated state. So uh, what happens if we console.log action.type? X is not defined. Uh, so right now, the everything's breaking because of this. So I'm going to comment out all this code. Um, OK, so action.type is this strange Redux thing. Um, well, let's just say switch statement. This is a standard pattern, the switch statement, and return the appropriate authentication state. Action.state. If it's uh, true, if it's false. Okay, cool. The code is running, which means that that seems like it might be working out. Um, at this point, don't worry about the state immutability since it is small and simple in this example. For each action, now return a new object, for example, authenticated true. So let's add authenticated true in here. And then we'll do authenticated false in here. Also, don't forget to write default case in your switch. So here we have the default case that returns the current state. Uh, we want to return the current state, so that's just uh, state. This is important because once your app has multiple reducers, they all run anytime an action dispatch is made, even when the action isn't related to that reducer. In such a case, you want to make sure that you return the current state. So what we want to do is, yeah, if we're running a different redu uh, reducer and this one is, is going to be run anyways, we want to just return uh, the default state anyways. So let's see what happens if I click this. Okay, it looks like we failed most of the tests should return an object with the type property set to the string logout. The store should be initialized with an object with an authenticated property set to false. Authenticated set to false. The store should be initialized with an object with an authenticated property set to false. So the action.type is going to be passed in, right? Action.type. So the type is going to be either log in or log out. So this is not right. So we should make this uh, log in on this one, log out. Um, and then maybe the break statements work for conditionals. And what we should do here is actually just return, return, because we want to be we want the reducer to return the value that comes from the result here so um, yeah maybe this will do it 
Okay, so that's what it was. Uh, yeah, the this is this is pretty tricky stuff. So I'm not actually going to get hung up here because I don't really know how to describe this in great depth. Uh, basically, Redux is like a, a way to manage state. You want to be able to pass data in, and it goes through. Um, you when the when the reducer is run and it doesn't have uh, a action dot type called that um, renders out to log in or log out. You want to just return the state of the normal application. So this reducer would go would be run, but it would, nothing would be reduced through it. And you've got a lot of different reducers doing a lot of different work when you've got a bigger web application. And so that's uh, that's how I'm seeing this. And so yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll see you in the next lesson.